Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post interview. I am here joined by Mr. Simon Aubrey Cocking, the, the editor and co-founder of Irish Tech News and chief officer of Crypto Coin News. Welcome, sir. Nice. Thanks for having me. So starting off, uh, would you care to give a brief introduction of your background and your career as well? Sure. Um, yeah, I guess with Irish Tech News, we've been covering tech trends for, it's been going for about eight years. Mm -hmm. And three or four years ago, we began to see stories about blockchain and what it could potentially do. So we began to, any new technology that comes along, we like to explore it and see if it's going to work and what will happen. So obviously from that, subsequently, things became more crypto focused. Mm -hmm. And so that led to the CryptoCoin.news site, which is specifically focused on crypto stories. Now, so, what was the threshold? You know, what caught your eye? And you know, what made you decide to dive into crypto then? Yeah, the news look, one then? I guess with the CryptoCoin.news, I got asked to be the editor of it. And uh, I definitely wasn't an expert in cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. So it was a steep learning curve. But I was in the fortunate position as editor that I could commission writers to write stories that I thought were interesting and I wanted to know about. So, you know, I wanted to know maybe what, what, what are the pros and cons of using Ether against Bitcoin and stuff. So basically, mm -hmm. it was a, a fast learning curve, but at the same time, I was in a position where I could commission people to write stories, right. which, which I thought would do well, but also would educate me as well. Now, when it comes to publishing news, there's a lot of fields, right? So it could be tech related, it could be market pricing, it could be trends. So what would you say that the most audience, you know, what type of news that audience puts their eyes on most you know, when it comes to traffic or views? Yeah, look, I mean, editorially, uh, I try to make sure that we don't just write based upon traffic based, mm -hmm. you know, like because there are some sites that almost generate an algorithm, keywords, write about those topics. Mm -hmm. So obviously we look at the data and we do look to write about things that are topical, mm -hmm. but equally, if I think something's interesting or if a writer pitches an interesting story, uh, we like to run that too. And there are, there are actually strategic reasons why it's smart to do this too, because we have a long tail. So we have almost 13,000 articles. And in any week, obviously, whatever's new is the, the most read stuff. Mm -hmm. But there's a tail down per month there where maybe 2,000 articles are viewed, Indeed, of yes. which some were published 3, 6, 12 months ago. Mm -hmm. So if you can write good, intriguing, evergreen content, you will be surprised mm -hmm the various different ways people will come to your site. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're saying what's hot. Well, obviously the data tells you what's hot and Twitter hashtags will tell you what's trending. <laughs> course, yes, yes. So, so we do do that and you do a bit of that. Mm -hmm. But I think if you're going to have an interesting site, you don't just chase, chase, chase the, you know, the trends. Ideally, mm -hmm. maybe you try to be counterintuitive and s tell other interesting stories. Now, obviously, if it gets no views at all, you Indeed. need to look at the data and not do it. <laughs> now, switching gears to mm -hmm. blockchain, our main topic sure. here today. Uh, a lot of suggestions on combining blockchain with journalism are being brought up to the blockchain community. Yeah. Now, what they are generally suggesting is monetizing uh, journalism, which means not having publishers resort to advertisement or advertisement profits. So do you believe that there is a problem within the journalism industry when it comes to profit making? Well, God, I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> newspapers are closing. You know, mm -hmm. if you look at the Washington Post or the New York Times, I mean, you know, we're very much aware of the wider trends and the challenge. I mean, mm -hmm. and monetization, I think every, every media outlet needs to have a strategy and needs to be bringing it in. Otherwise, it's just, you're just blogging. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I completely agree it's a challenge. And then, you see, me, medium are trying to do things where you can only read five articles a month and then you have to pay. Yes. So, you know, blockchain, blockchain overall, if you can measure micro transfers of value mm -hmm. and monetize that, journalistic articles, it makes sense. You know, if you read more than two articles, then you need to pay or something like that. Mm -hmm. Now, so we're not there yet. So we, we, we aim to create compelling enough content that enough people traffic comes to the site that advertisers want to have some relationship with us. Mm -hmm. But obviously, we're not just talking banner ads. Maybe we're yes. talking other ways to work and collaborate. Now, uh, there are a lot of projects, like I mentioned, uh, such as Civil, uh, the news pack by WordPress, as well as Published Protocol. So, uh, all the trends are suggesting towards applying blockchain into an uh, article predict, uh, a publish, publishing. So uh, do you believe that the trend of applying blockchain with journalism is headed the right way? Uh, I guess, yes, I hope so. I would like it to be. <laughs> yes. I mean, WordPress in itself was a fantastic thing when it came out, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it was so much better than the other content management systems. It was so easy to get people going and therefore it helped people to 
discover whether what they were writing about had value. Mm -hmm. So overall, I like WordPress, so therefore it makes sense that they're partnering with blockchain. I mean, at Irish Tech News, both sites are actually based on WordPress templates. Yes. So, yes. so I get the value, and if that subsequently there became a plugin with blockchain that, that could monetize, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's going to win, you know? But, and you'd be willing to apply that to your platform as well? I think we would definitely like to. I mean, the challenge is always, you know, you look at the sites that have put a paywall up, you know, does mm -hmm. it work? Or the Guardian doesn't, but it says, please make a donation. You yes, know, Like indeed. a Wikipedia right. kind of thing. So uh, I, I guess one thing is we, we try a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So therefore, this, and we're actually discussing this at the moment in terms of the new changes to WordPress. Mm -hmm. So we would definitely try it. And then with the data, you, then you look pretty fast, you know, is this working or is this blocking traffic? Mm -hmm. So I hope so. Now, winding back the clock a year, mm -hmm. you've been monitoring the crypto industry you know, throughout 2018, right? So what would you say the top news of 2018 is? Okay, so I guess this is one around just that we like to do stories that are interesting rather than just trending. So mm -hmm. with my writers, I, I try to push back than just doing stories about price of Bitcoin up, price <laughs> of Bitcoin down. Yes, yes. So on the other hand, you know, if you put a story like that, and the, the thing is in a rising market, everyone wants to read about prices rising. Right. Nobody really wants to read an article about prices falling when they lose their value by 10% every day. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I think you have to be thinking uh, editorially about that. that mm -hmm. Those are certainly the biggest stories, but, but like our interviews with John McAfee, uh, or we just did Bjorn from ABBA, mm -hmm. who, who have built something that would work well on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. Those are things that, that personally I'm more interested in sharing with other people, mm -hmm. and, and to some degree the data shows that people want to read that. I, I guess it's the thing, like if you're going to work, you want a quick read about right. price, mm -hmm. but if you want a longer read, well, I mean, there's only so much that we can say about price because price is what it is. Yes, yes, right, right. So I, I, would, I would always try and do a bit of both or more of the, the feature-based stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, what would you say then that where the trend in blockchain is currently headed for? Mm -hmm. Look, I, I, so in my talk yesterday, I had the, the Gartner uh, hype curve, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, I think the reality is it's much less like this and much more steady rise. Right, right. Because what's happening is, is that the technology is new, it's evolving, it's being built. It takes time for it to work and mm -hmm. work well and to find bugs. And like the last Ethereum update was stopped because they saw a flaw and if it had right. been... The Constantinople, right? Yeah. Yes. If it had been released, then people could have scraped it out and it could have been hacked. Mm -hmm. So therefore, this is the thing to remember that good things take time. And you may be able to crowdfund in a day, a minute, three weeks and raise 20, 30 million. Mm -hmm. But there are very few people that can build a quality product in three weeks. Mm -hmm. So I think therefore that where it's going is it is getting there, but, but the, the, the mainstream steady, media mm -hmm. pushed the hype and the expectation too high. And therefore everyone thought Bitcoin was gonna go, go, go. And equally the blockchain based products would be mm -hmm. ready. But uh, like I was a software developer for a while, a very bad mm -hmm. one, but, <laughs> but it means that I know that, you know, it could take a quarter, it could take two quarters, it could mm -hmm. take three quarters. Right. And, and so therefore it's about expectation, managing expectations. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to crypto trading in the financial sector, there's a lot of new concepts coming along, such mm -hmm. as uh, futures product, uh, as well as the OTC trading, uh, derivatives maybe. So what would you say that the financing market, how would you say that the financing market would adopt cryptocurrency? Will they or will they not? And how will they do it? Yeah, look, I mean, I guess a lot of innovation in fintech in general came in payments. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we all know how much an excessively large payment is, say for the problem that TransferWise solved. Mm -hmm. All the areas where you can reduce friction, you can re speed up the transaction and reduce right. costs are gonna work. Mm -hmm. So therefore, th that's where I see the innovation coming first. And then as users, we want a seamless experience through the day. We, mm -hmm. we wanna just get up, we wanna do what we wanna do, right, and right. we want it to be hassle-free. And actually, we want a lot of this just to be on the back end. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the technology that can achieve that will be the one that succeeds, mm -hmm. you know? I get up, my smartphone pays for the bus, it pays for my lunch, gets me into the gym, maybe, you know, maybe even with an RFID that is contactless or something. Mm. So I think those are the ones that will work. Now, the launch of BACT is what every crypto trader has been waiting for. Now, currently, I believe that is postponed. So uh, do you believe that the launch of BACT will bring the price of Bitcoin back to its original state? I, you don't have to give price of predictions. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> well, you see, the thing is, is that it's and a bit like Constantinople. Uh, we can discuss developer-related aspects to the coin. Right. But the prices of the coin is also massively manipulated by a few people holding mm -hmm. it and by people looking to trade on the fall and on the rise. So therefore, while something like that, in theory, should have a logical effect on price, mm -hmm. I think everything we've seen is, is that 
these things don't necessarily have a logical effect on price because you have enough, so many other people counter trading against your expectations. That, right. like, that what you've phrased as a possibility, therefore, people will go, oh, okay, well, if that's coming, then it should rise. And then you've probably got other people hedging against it's, that. It's more like a, like a chess, right? It's like a game, I right? I think so, yeah. a lot. <laughs> Especially because a few people hold a lot, so they can be more chess-like in how they do this. Mm -hmm. Now, moving on to your career at ICO Bench, you're currently the advisor of ICO Bench. Now, uh, yeah, top-ranked advisor. For, mm -hmm based on revenue. Now, I'm pretty sure you must get tons of projects come through your desk each day. Mm -hmm. So when analyzing or reviewing a project, what do you tend to put most weight on? Yeah, look, I mean, you, I guess you have to assess based on what they can give you. So therefore, uh, the less that they get, you know, the quality of what they, what, what's out there, the website, what they do, right. who they are, are they credible people? You know, like what's their, what's their backstory? Did they suddenly appear on Twitter last week? Mm -hmm. You know, are they on LinkedIn? Um, all the things just to see are these real are these real people mm -hmm. and what have they done before mm -hmm. and you know I had one recently and I said look none none of your profiles are real you're all pseudonyms and they said oh it's because we're a bit like Satoshi Nakamoto and I'm oh. like yeah maybe <laughs> but to be honest I would have no confidence in referring you to an investor mm -hmm. when I don't even know who you are <laughs> right 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 so therefore you know like on one hand it's 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 pretty much common sense mm -hmm. but some people don't do it and other people are intentionally not doing it mm -hmm. and those would be red flags. Now there was a bad, bad example like you mentioned, what about the good example then? What's the most sure. prominent one that you've reviewed or seen? Yeah, so I guess like uh, one, one that Clearpoll are a voting app, yeah? Clearpoll. Yeah, yes, and they yes, do yes, polling, right. okay? The guys who built that were, were app developers before. Mm -hmm. So therefore they weren't looking to raise the money to build something that, of a type they hadn't built before. Right. They've been in the business, they've been doing it for a long time, they just use crowdfunding to deliver on their latest idea. Mm -hmm. So I think if you can find guys that have already done stuff, guys, men, women, people mm -hmm. who have past projects, that, that shows you that this is just a new way to raise funding, a faster way than before. Mm -hmm. And I'd have, and then another one was co-vesting. So co-vesting is copy investing. Mm -hmm. And the guys who did that were ex-bankers. They had worked in the sector. They knew right. the sector. They knew the problem. They just crowdfunded to give them the money to put it out there. Right. So, and they did it. They achieved what they were going to do. They had, they went for a reasonable target. They weren't going for a hundred million. Mm -hmm. You know. So therefore, the, almost if you're going for a massive amount. The, it's not credible sometimes. Why are you doing that? Why? No one needs that much right, money. Right, right, right. You know? And generally, if you have that much money, it often hasn't ended well. People do bad things with it. <laughs> you know? Indeed, indeed. Now, 2018 is suggested to be a big year for blockchain as real life adoption mm -hmm. comes to enrich the lives of people. Sure. So, what's your prediction for 2019? Yeah, look, I guess when we were talking about the speed of development, the prediction is, is that things are being done, things are working, things are evolving but we almost have to manage expectations too. You know, like we are getting to a place and people say it's like internet 2.0. So therefore internet 1.0, there was a lot of hype late 90s and mm -hmm. therefore there was a lot of carnage as well because some people built too fast, over promised. Mm -hmm. So therefore I can see stuff. So like the examples we just discussed, right. work and are doing things. Another, another good one is Morpheus Network, which mm -hmm. is supply side networks. They're building up contracts between Russia and Taiwan. They've been mm -hmm. talking to the UN about how to do it. So they're good, they're working. But at the same time, you know, it takes time to build in different markets. Mm -hmm. You know, are you going to be in Korea? Are you going to be in the West? You know, like it's different, it's diff different right. culture, different skills. So therefore, things are happening. They are going to happen. They are getting better. But I, I can't see many flipping to world domination in three months. It's mm -hmm. just there's still some serious tech behind it that you have to build. Well, that is all the question we have today. Thanks so much for your oh, time. Thank you very much. Cheers.